one thing I'm asking, this one thing I'm needing, a moment that's passing, it's not what I'm seeking, alright, like it's the air I'm breathing, I want your presence, feet on the earth, heart full of Shut 
Let's read Psalms 23 together. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff that comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. out all 
shepherd I shall not be in want and surely love and goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life when you choose to trust God yes he has love and mercy and goodness to follow you so glad to have you today at Chapel Hill what a wonderful day to celebrate the Lord this is the Lord's day and there's great blessing to be in God's house and I want you to do so do me a favor. I want you to turn and introduce yourself. We've got child dedication. We've got families coming to present their children to the Lord so they can come to the stage at this time. Greet one another. Step across the aisle and say hello to one another. Love for you to do that. beautiful families coming on the stage to present their children to the Lord today for our special child dedication time. How wonderful. Good. 
lot of handsome, beautiful people. At Chapel Hill, we, we, we really believe these ceremonies are very, very important as we present our children to the Lord. You know, some, some churches, they'll have infant baptism where we believe here at Chapel Hill that we are, we are water, baptism, ba water baptized after we make a personal faith decision to make Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. So we'll wait until children are old enough to make that personal decision before they are wa water baptized. And so we have what we believe is a very important child dedication ceremony. Uh, there's precedent for this. Hannah brought Samuel to the Lord and presented him to the Lord. We also see Joseph and Mary presenting Jesus at the temple and, and offering him up to his heavenly father. And so we have precedent for that. The Bible also tells us that in Deuteronomy chapter 6, it tells us that we, mom and dad, all of us should love the Lord God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. And then it goes on to say in verse 4, to take God's commands and impress them, impress them upon your children. And that word impressed is, is the the me same meaning of like a tattoo where you impress it for the rest of their life that they will know God and they'll know his word and then it says to talk about it at home talk about the commandments of the Lord when you lie down and when you get up and when you go out and when you walk along the road or drive along the road we drive they walked but anyway we, we want to impress the commandments of the Lord upon our children and so we just believe this is so important that parents make this faith decision and commitment to God and before the congregation that we're going to lead our children this way. And Cindy, why don't you say hello and uh, anything yes. you want to share. Thank you, parents, for letting us share this special day with your children. And I just want to say, picking up on what Pastor was saying, it's just been so on my heart this past week. Last week in the message, um, 2 Timothy 3.15, I think it was, was in the message about how from infancy that you were taught the scriptures. And as we said about impressing the word as you go, well, the only way you can impress it is if you know it, if you're in it regularly. And I would just say, parents, if there's one thing you make sure you're depositing in your, in your children, in your infants, from infancy, or some of them as they're a little older, is the word of God. Yes. The word of God is so powerful. And if you just start giving them a steady diet of the word, they're gonna grow spiritually just because they naturally are going to be, they're going to be, it's going to feed them and it's going to feed you too. I think as parents, a lot of times we just, we don't show the way to our children because we maybe haven't, aren't even real disciplined in our regular, just being in the word. It's not that hard these days. We've got these little smartphones and you can, <laughs> you can pull up the Bible right, app yep. and you can turn it on the audio version. Get it. I, I say, get it to where it's just it's playing in your home. Yes. Put it in their rooms when they go to sleep at night. Yes. It will just naturally raise up spiritual giants. Yes. So if there's anything you do, I know you're going to do a lot to train your kids. You're going to invest a lot in them in many ways. The greatest thing you can do and partnering with what you're doing today, just bring them to the Lord. Is God, we're going to, we're going to deposit the spiritual goods starting with the Word of God in them. Amen. And it will, it will just produce, yes. oh my goodness, the giants for the kingdom. So yes. God bless you. Thank you for letting us share in this day with you. Yes. Yes, yes. I don't think there's any question about how my wife feels about that. And uh, we've done that with our children, and we just strongly encourage you. If you're an extended family member, maybe a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle or a family or a friend, and you'd like to come stand, because we're going to give them a charge in just a moment, we'd like for you to come and stand. If you're a part of helping raise these children, why don't you come and join us right here? You just come stand right down here on the floor and um, we'll let you be a part of this charge. So you can come at this time. And while you're doing that, I'm just gonna let these parents introduce their children to you. Just give us their names. I don't know if they told you we were gonna do this or not, so make sure you know their names when I come to you. All right, here we go, all right, here we go. <laughs> Tell us the kids' names. Aiden Lexima and... Uh... Oh, Zoe and Akira. All right, good, good, good. Hawk. Hawk, yeah. Olivia. Olivia. Okay. Good, good, good. Right down here. Hello, this is Destiny Ray. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful children. And I want to say, parents, thank you for saying we're going to make this commitment. Now, here's the charge. I want, oh, look at everybody. Come join with us. All right, here's the charge that we're going to give you, all right? And you all, uh, after I give this charge, I'm just going to ask you to make this commitment, if you will, just say, I will in just a moment, all right? All right, so, so mom and dad, family members, will you, will you make a focused, intentional decision to train your children up in the ways of God? 
meaning you're going to train them to know what it means to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to train them in the Word, as Cindy talked about. Also, will you model what it means to be a follower of the Lord Jesus? Will you let your kids see you live as a Christ follower in your speech, in your actions, in the things that you do? And even when we make mistakes, they can see how we are willing to say, I'm sorry, or I forgive. I think it's important to model those kind of things also before our kids. And then finally, when they get to an age where it's time to release them, will you release them into the hands of a loving God who has a purpose and a plan for their life, even if he calls them into to be a pastor or a missionary or an evangelist or something in the work of God? Would you release them into the hands of God that says, I will care for them. I will take them to fulfill my purpose for them. If you will do these things, will you say, I will? I will. Okay, now we want to pray for you. In fact, I would like our, our sponsors, our hosts to help me. If, if you have a small child, if you wouldn't mind putting, putting them in the arms of your, of your host that is there supporting you and helping you today. And we're going to pray a blessing over you together and uh, for you family. So just kind of stretch your hand towards us. Let's just all pray together as a church family. This is family time. We're just praying blessing over these kids and over these families. Lord, we're thankful that we can come together in the name of Jesus. We're thankful today for these beautiful families, for these beautiful children that you have blessed with these parents. And now, Lord, I just pray first for the parents as they're making this decision, these grandparents, these aunts and uncles, that they're making a decision to train their children up in the way they should go. Help them to train them. Help them to speak God's word. Help them to live according to your word and model for our kids what it means to follow Jesus wholeheartedly. Lord, I just pray for the children that you would protect them, that you would provide for them, that you would deposit in them by the Holy Spirit Help them at a very young age to become a devoted follower of the Lord Jesus. Help them to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Help them to say yes as you place your calling upon their lives. And Lord, today, in this environment of your presence and your people, we pray blessing over them. We pray that your hand would be with them, that you would keep them from pain. Lord, that you would keep them from evil, that they might not ever cause pain, and let them live under the glory and the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for these things, we thank you for it, and we dedicate them now to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everybody said a big amen. Amen. Praise the Lord together. Amen. Thank you, family members. Thank you for being a part of this. God. Can you give it up for these friends and family and these children again this morning? It is such an honor to be a part of a church that is dedicated to raising up children of God and that these young ones would know of his love, his goodness, and his mercy at a very young age. So we thank you. And again, welcome to the church at Chapel Hill. If you happen to be tuning in online, keep watching because we have an incredible worship experience in store for you. And I'm telling you, there is no place that I would rather be today than right here with you guys worshiping the Lord. I believe that better is one day in his house than the thousands elsewhere. So we're just so glad that you found yourself here today. And if you have, we believe that God has something very special in store for you. And if it happens to be your first time with us, I want to invite you to take a look in the seat pocket in front of you. You're going to find a connect card. And if you would, sometime during this worship experience, fill this out with a little bit of your family's information so that we can know that you were here. And you can take this card with you immediately following the worship experience to our hospitality room right there in the back. We'll have a team that would love to get to meet you and your family. They have a gift and refreshments for you today. And of course, if it's not your first time, but you simply have a prayer need, you can put that prayer need on the back of this card and our team will be praying over that this week and you can leave it on your seat. Somebody will be by to pick it up in just a moment. Well, right now we get to continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offering to the Lord. Amen. Yes. We're excited about it here because we know what a blessing it is. 
And uh, as, as we do that, you can see on the screen behind me, there are several ways that you can give here at Chapel Hill online, at the kiosk out in the commons area, you can text to give. And then of course the envelope there in the seat back pocket. And as you prepare your giving, I just want to encourage you with a, a scripture that I read this week um, in a devotion. It started with 2 Corinthians 9, 6. And 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says that those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly, but those who sow generously will also reap generously. And in my devotion, there was an illustration of a, a farmer and his seed. And see, when the farmer sows that seed, he is guaranteed a harvest. But if he holds on to that seed and doesn't plant it because he doesn't feel like he has enough, he's guaranteed zero harvest. And so it's the same way with us. The Lord provides us with seed to sow into his kingdom. And if we hold on to it, there's gonna be zero harvest. But when we sow that in faith, we are guaranteed a harvest in his name. So I don't know if it's your first time giving today or you're a faithful giver, but I wanna encourage you, whatever it is, sow it and watch what the Lord does in you and your family's life. Let me pray over our giving today. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are our provider, Lord. You are Lord over all, God, and we choose you over this money and the things of this world. We thank you that we get to put our trust into you, into the things that you're doing right here and all over the world, Lord. We thank you, we give you glory, and we give you honor in our giving. We give with cheerful hearts, not out of hesitancy, Lord, or fear, but with great joy, knowing that you are the one that is taking care of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Well, right now, our hosts are passing out the given containers. You can just continue to pass it through your row. Once it gets to the end, you can put it on the floor, and they'll be back to pick it up in just a moment. A quick reminder to those in the room today, uh, if you haven't already attended Growth Track one day, we're gonna be having it next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Immediately following this 11 a.m. worship experience, we'll have lunch provided for you. You get to hear from Pastor Dave a little bit about our mission and vision here at Chapel Hill. You can meet some of our pastors and church staff, hear about the ministries and how you can be a part of all that God is doing right here at Chapel Hill. It's very easy to sign up. You can see on the screen behind me, you can text the keyword one day to 484848 and follow those simple instructions that come to you. Or you can stop at guest services on your way out and they would love to help you sign up for Growth Track. And we are very excited as we're diving into a brand new message series today entitled hashtag blessed. Take a look. Blessed. It just feels good to say it. People love the idea and most hope to attain it. Some pray for it. Others desire it for their marriage, family, business. Hey, even when I'm at Panera, blessed. It's a term we talk about at church, see on social media, yet it doesn't seem to find everyone. Blessed. How do we step into it, live in it fully, sustain a lifelong journey, and even leave a legacy called blessed? All right, we got a brand new series today. I'm really, really excited about the next couple of weeks. I hope you're here, and uh, just great to see everybody today. Next, next Sunday, I do want to say this: we're starting something for three weeks uh, that some of you may be interested in. At 10:30, we'll be having a, cl a class entitled Israel 101. Israel 101. It starts at 10:30, which means you could come to the 9 a.m. worship experience and attend the class at 10:30. So, so I would encourage you to consider that. I think we have a few spots left, a few spots remaining open. Uh, but it's, we're going to answer the question: Why do we stand with Israel and the Jewish people? Why should we? Uh, one of the reasons is Genesis 12:3. God said, "I will bless those who bless Israel." And that's one of the reasons why we should stand with Israel. But we want you to come if, you, if that's something that's interesting to you or that you just feel like you need to learn more about that. I would highly encourage you to consider that. Again, you could come at 9 o'clock to our worship experience and stay for the 1030 class. It will be about 90 minutes. So for three weeks, you're going to learn a lot. And so that's available to you uh, starting next week. All right. We're in this series, Blessed. And I'm just, I'm just curious. How many of you would say, we'll take a quick poll, raise your hand. How many of you would say, without a doubt, I am blessed. I am so blessed. Wave your hand at me right now. Look, look around the room. Wave your hand. I got a guy back right over here with both hands and feet up in the air. 
He is saying, I am so blessed. Awesome. Now, now do this. Let's close our eyes for just a moment. Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right. And now I want you to picture the last time you thought to yourself where you were, what you were doing when you thought, I'm so blessed. I am so blessed. Where were you? What were you doing when you thought, I am just so blessed? All right. Do you see it? Okay. Two or three things maybe. If we're not careful, we tend to equate blessing only with material things or wealth or travel, maybe you pictured someplace you were in the mountains or on the beach, and you're thinking, oh, I'm just so blessed. Or maybe, maybe for you it was Free Pie Wednesday. <laughs> or, or maybe it was an upgraded drink at Starbucks. Man, I just, I'm so blessed. I got this upgraded drink. But the word blessed in Scripture describes so much more than stuff. The Apostle Paul did a, a teaching on hashtag blessed in Ephesians chapter one, well, sort of. And he described being blessed as having spiritual blessings. Somebody say spiritual blessings. All right, Ephesians chapter one, verse three. I wanna read this verse and then wanna talk about it briefly. Ephesians one, verse three says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Somebody say every spiritual blessing in Christ. And then he goes on to say what those spiritual blessings in Christ are. He says, we've been chosen to be holy and blameless. Now, you might read through that and say, okay, no big deal. No, that is a huge deal, that we've been chosen to be holy and blameless. You know what comes out of being holy and blameless? Freedom. Freedom comes from being holy and blameless. Holy means set apart. We're set apart for God. We've been chosen to be holy and blameless. We're recipients of his love. He says, you receive my love as my sons and my daughters. Come on, somebody, that's hashtag blessed right there. We're recipients of his love. We're also recipients of his grace that, the, that Paul writes has been lavished on us. Say lavished, lavished. It's one of those picture words. You just see it lavishing on you. Hashtag blessed. And he has forgiven us, Paul writes, of all of our sins. Those are spiritual blessings that are huge. He lavishes this on us by his grace. It's difficult to read this reliable book. Remember last week we talked about this reliable book. The scripture is reliable. It's difficult to read it without soon realizing that God desires his sons and his daughters to be blessed. I mean, you can't read it very far without seeing the word blessed or blessing. I believe God's blessing is the heart of God for his sons and his daughters. But I also see that his blessings are always conditional. For example, he told Israel in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, if you fully obey the Lord, now notice I started with the blue if. <laughs> if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. You'll experience all these, help, help me read it today. You'll experience all these if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be, your children and your crops will be, the offspring of your herds and your flocks will be, your fruit baskets and breadboards will be. Sounds like a good series title to me, doesn't it? That it would be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be, be blessed. Well, it's a little, little awkward with the change of page there. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. Somebody say blessed. Yes. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. The Lord will guarantee a yes. on everything you do and fill your storehouses with grain. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. I read this because blessing is in the heart of God for his sons and his daughters. Let's keep looking for hashtag blessed. Psalm 84, verse 4. I love this. Blessed are those who dwell. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. I don't know about you. Some of you may close your eyes a moment ago, and you felt like you're so blessed when you were able to be in this house and experience the presence of God through praise and worship. Oh, how blessed you are, the Scripture says, that you can dwell in God's house, and we get to praise Him together. We're blessed. Psalm 94, verse 12. Blessed is the one you discipline. Now, some of you might be a little surprised about that. But blessed is the one you discipline, Lord, the one you teach 
from your law. You know what? When we are disciplined, we become his disciple. And we are blessed as we become his disciple, as we learn his word and we learn how to walk in his word and live in his word through small groups, through, through Israel 101, through women of valor groups. We are becoming his disciples and his followers and we're learning how to love him and follow him and serve him. We're blessed when we do that. Psalm 22, 9 says, the generous will themselves be blessed for they share their food with the poor. Acts 20, verse 35, and the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Somebody say, more blessed, more blessed. Jesus says it's more blessed to give or more blessed to bless than to receive. Cindy and I went out to eat a few years ago and we had in our pocket, one of those things I love to have in my pocket, a gift card. I had a gift card to go to this particular restaurant. We went to this restaurant to have dinner and use our gift card. And we came to the end of the meal and we were ready to use our gift card and the server was nowhere to be found. So we finally tracked the server down and said, we're ready for our ticket. And she, and she said, oh no, don't worry about it. Somebody in the restaurant has already picked up your, your ticket. And we're thinking, so blessed, we are blessed. Still got the gift card in our pocket. You know, I mean, this is a good deal today, all right? So we sat there for a little while and uh, we, we just talked and, and stayed for a little while. And then the, the server came back and said, hey, I just want to let you know that there was someone else in the restaurant always also that wanted to pick up your ticket. I just want you to know that somebody, and somebody else wanted to do it also. And then she looked at us like, who are you? <laughs> like, 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 what? <laughs> and, and some of you think, well, yeah, that, that happened because, because you're the pastor. No, here's why I believe those, those kind of things happen. Because I like, I like to do that. I like to pick up people's tickets. In fact, if you go out to eat with me, well, I can't take everybody out today. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, and I can't buy everybody's meal today. But, but, but I, I love to pick up the ticket. I love to be generous in that way when I can. I, I want to do that. And, and so sometimes God just surprises us or surprises me, and he blesses me in the same way that I get to bless other people. I, I want to share a key thought with you for this series. Here it is. The key to a blessed life, a blessed life in Christ, is a heart of generosity, a heart of generosity. And if that's so, I think we need to ask the next question. Here it is. Am I generous? Do I have a blessed, a generous heart? That's what we're going to dig into it in this three-week series. Next week, I don't want you to miss next week, we're going to be talking about the best of blessed, the best of blessed. Here's what God knows. God knows that for most of us, money and material things will be the number one competitor for our hearts. Why? Because money is a counterfeit God. And if you, if you find yourself over the next few minutes being just a little bit defensive as I talk about this, that might, that might be a signal that you just need to open your heart up to God and let God begin to work with you and God begin to work in you and change you from being defensive about it to being receptive to it so that God can work through and in you. Money promises what only God can provide. Let me show you four things that people wrongly believe about money. Number one, people believe that money promises security. If you have more, you will have more security. You'll be more secure. Secondly, money promises freedom. If you have more, you will be free. Money promises power. If you have enough, you will be powerful or more powerful. And people believe that, wrongly believe that money promises significance. If you have enough, you will be important or you will be more important. But the truth is, and many of you know this, that you can have bajillions of dollars. But when tragedy strikes, you realize that all the money in the world will not make you more secure. Because only God brings security, and only God's power and God's love brings true freedom and true peace and true significance. It doesn't come through more money. That is why Jesus taught this, and Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. He said, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Other translations say both God and mammon. 
Mammon was a Hebrew word for material possessions. So, so let's spend the rest of our time talking about the test of blessed, the test of blessed. God tests us because he wants to know, will you love and trust money or will you love and trust God? Will you love and trust material things, material blessing and stuff, or will you love and trust God? God will test us to know where our hearts are in the matter. Now, I didn't like tests in school. How many of you, how many of you enjoyed taking tests in school? Yeah, all you really smart people, all you really, yeah. yeah. But there were, there, I will say, there were a few tests, it's probably the one, one there, there were a few tests that I actually enjoyed, all right? Those were the ones that I knew that I was going to ace. Now, some of you say, well, I can't remember any of those, all right? But, but I'm really talking about elementary school right now, okay? All right, that's what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to be clear. Spelling. I'm going to kill it. <laughs> Bring on the spelling test. In fact, I couldn't wait for the spelling test. I mean, and, and those early math tests, I mean, you know, those, those difficult math problems like addition. I mean, I love the addition test, you know, subtraction. I got this. I, early on, I got it. Somehow I figured it out early, and I'm ready for that test. The multiplication flashcards, come on, flash those cards. I got this. Yeah, yeah. Division, go ahead. Algebra, not so much. Geometry, <laughs> not so much. I did not like those tests. I didn't want those tests. But, but when you know that you've got it, when you know that you can do this, when you know that, hey, I've done this and I can do it again, it's like, Bring it on, bring it on, I, I got, I've got this. And here's what I wanna say, many of you, I know this, many of you are acing this test of blessed. Many of you are living in it, you're living in hashtag blessed, and, and, and so you're saying a lot of amens today, I get that. And probably some of you could come up and teach this maybe better than I. But I want, you to, I want everyone to hear this. The test of blessed goes two ways. The test of blessed goes two ways, first, God tests our hearts as he teaches us the principle of the tithe. Yes, I want to talk about the tithe for a moment, T-I-T-H-E. Now, we don't use that term anywhere else in our society except right here when we come together at church and we talk about the tithe because I, I want you to clearly understand it today as it relates to the test of blessed. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30, the Bible says a tithe, the Hebrew word is Maser, M-A-A-S-E-R, and it means, it simply means a tenth, 10%. Ten a tithe or 10% of everything from the land, the Bible says, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees belongs to the Lord, it is holy. A tithe, a tenth, is set apart and it is holy. The principle is again seen in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, and the Bible says, honor the Lord with your wealth, and with the first fruits of all of your crops, or the first part, that first tenth of all of your crops. So, so God tests our hearts, and he does it with instructions in regard to this tithe, or this tenth part. And then God says, when you bring the tithe to me, and you, you, you bring it to me, you are testing me. So he tests our hearts whether we're willing to bring it, and then he says, when you do, you're actually testing me. Now, this is the only place in Scripture where we see God saying, you can, I want you to test me. Bring a tenth part and test me. So he tests our hearts, and then he says, hey, you can test me with this. Now, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, I want you to look what it says. It says, bring the whole tithe, the tenth, into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And he says, test me. Here it is. Test me in this says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Now, who is Malachi referring to here? The, who is the prophet referring to in verse 12 when he says, then all nations will call you blessed? Who is you? All right, yes, so, so tithe. So the, the you is found back in verse 10. You are those who bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. And he says, when you do that, then others, others, all nations, others will call you blessed. How many of you have had people look at you and your family and just look at things that surround your life and say, you, you are so blessed because they see it. 
They, they see it in your heart. They see it in your life. They see it in your experience. And, and listen, don't say that to people just because they got a big house. They may not be spiritually blessed at all in that big house. They may be absolutely miserable in that big house. How many of you have ever seen moving vans back up to big houses because something happened and it wasn't good? It wasn't something of blessing. Listen, we, we, we are blessed when we have spiritual blessings in Christ and we learn to test and trust God and he says, this is the way you walk blessed. The principle is this, to return the first tenth, the tithe to God. Now here's the idea, I want you to say it out loud with me, it's coming up on the screen. I will give God my first and my best so he can bless the rest. All right, I want you to say that out loud with me. I will give God my first and my best so he can bless the rest. Leave that up on the screen. We've got cameras going up. Take a picture of that and memorize that and just say that in your quiet time. I'm going to give God my first and my best so he can bless the rest. Now, Cindy and I, I will tell you, from personal experience, we have learned this to be true. For over 40 years of marriage, now I realize it's hard to believe that we've been married for 40 years when she looks like she's 38. Come on, help me. Help me. I'm helping myself right now. But we, we have tested God, and we have practiced tithing, and God has shown himself faithful to us. Listen, we have never, I can't say we've even ever been tempted to stop tithing because even the enemy knows how committed we are to that. I mean, we've never had a time where we've said, hey, you know what? We've got to pay this bill rather than give God the tithe. Now, we've had some times when it was tight. No, I'm talking tighter than bark on a tree. I'm talking tight, tight, tight. I'm talking, oh, I'm getting some bad memories right now. I'm, t I'm, t I'm telling you, we, we had to make some decisions about can we even pay this bill this week? but we never, never considered not giving God the first part. You say, well, why was it so tight then? Because of decisions we had made that weren't really good. Look, notice I'm pointing to me, not her. Decisions I had made, the things that we had maybe not stewarded as well as we should have, or we needed that because it's shiny and it's fast, <laughs> and, and I want that, I want that, or I want that, and really wasn't time for us to have that but we wanted that and so it made it real tight. But that wasn't God's fault. So we continued to honor God over and over and over again and through the years as we've given God our first and our best, God has blessed the rest. Now some people think that if you give God a 10% that it's impossible to live on the 90%. Some people just think it's impossible. In fact. Some people who, who make, make a lot of money think, well, that 10% that, that is just too much money to give to God, and, and the 90%, you know, I'm going to hang on to that. Or some people that don't have much money, they think, well, well the, the 90 it's just impossible to live on the 90%. Let me give you a little illustration. That's why I have these tables here, all right? So come on out here and help me, and we're going to use uh, some fruit and vegetables, some produce. You vegans are going to love this illustration. All right, so we're going to start out with a, a small watermelon. Now, this is small because it's February, and this is the only thing we could get at the store. All right, so we got a little small watermelon, but we're going to give God one. We're going to give God one because he gets the tenth. He gets the tithe, and then, and then we're going to keep nine of them for ourselves. I mean, we get nine. God gets one. This is what the principle of the tithe is. We give God one. He gets nine. All right, what else do we have? All right, we've got a bag of apples. That's the way we normally buy them in the store. We don't go in and buy one. We, we, you know, we buy a bag. So we've got a bag of apples. We're going to give God his bag of apples. God loves apples. And you love apples. And so we're going to keep, we're going to keep, wow, nine bags of apples. Wow, wow. Anybody, anybody want an apple? Right there, right there. There we go. There we go. All right, any, anybody want a watermelon? Here we go. No, I wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't do that. We'd, we'd, have, we'd be sued for something here. Right? All right, what do we got here? Cauliflower. We got it. We, is, it is it a head of cauliflower? Is that what it is? Right. It's a head. That's good. It looks like a brain right here, all right? So we got a cauliflower. Got a cauliflower. And we're going to give God his first. This is God's. And then we're going to do what? We're going to keep nine of them. 
When we tithe, we're giving God one, and we're keeping nine heads of cauliflower, whether you like it, like it or not. You get to keep it. It's yours to do what you want to with it. What do we got here? We got, little, we got little oranges or tangerines. What are they? They are halos. California mandarins, pure goodness, it says. Pure goodness. So we're giving God the pure goodness for him to make some orange juice with that. That's God's, all right? But what do we do? We keep nine bags of pure goodness. Nine bags of pure goodness for you to steward, for you to manage, for you to do what you want to, eat it, give some of it away, give it away, a head of cauliflower, all right? So then we got a bunch of bananas. God likes bananas. We're going to give him one. He gets one, and we get to keep. I mean, every time I walk over here and I see we get to keep nine, I'm like, what? How good is God that he gives us nine? How many of you know all of it belongs to God? All of it belongs. Everything that you have comes from God everything and so he's letting us keep nine of them wow wow and what is this butternut Butternut squash all right here we go god feel free all right it's yours you get one you get one and we get nine let's get nine there we go there we go got nine they're kind of weird looking, aren't they? They're just kind of strange, right? So nine butternut squash. Here we got here. We've got lemons. And what does God do when you give him lemons? He makes lemonade, all right? And so you get nine bags of lemons to make lemonade for everybody in the house today. So on your way out, we don't have lemonade for you. But anyway, so wow, lemons. What do we got? God, God gets one. He gets one pineapple. He's a lot of little Hawaiian Feel to it all. There you go, God. There's your one pineapple, and I get to keep nine. Wow. Look at this table. They're having a hard time keeping everything on the table because it's the 90% that we get to keep. Are you still with me here? Are you, are you with me? All right, what do we got here? A stalk of lettuce stalker. Stalk of lettuce and, um, I mean, not lettuce, celery. I knew that. Trust me, I knew that. I promise. I wish I had some peanut butter right now to put right here. How many would like to have some peanut butter to put right there? Man. Or some hot wings uh, with, your, with your celery. Celery. That would be celery. And we've got nine stalks of celery. Are you kidding me? Look at this table. This is yours to steward, to manage, to direct, to eat to give away, to take care of. And then what do we got here? We got just a little stalk head of broccoli. God doesn't like broccoli. No. (laughs) That's why it's small. We aren't going to give him very much, but we're going to give him one. We're going to give God one, and we're going to keep nine stalks of broccoli. Look, the table is so much the table can't even contain everything that God says you get to keep. You get to keep the nine, God gets one. And it's so, so much. Let's, look, look, look. This is before it's even blessed. God hadn't even blessed it yet. Now think about the 90% when God puts his blessing on it. And he puts his blessing on it after you give him the one. And some of us just need faith for that. We just need faith to know that we, we give God the one. He's going he's gonna to bless the 90 some of us have some things we sell houses or we sell things we get profit and we say well that's just too much to give god one listen don't think of it that way when you give god his and keep the 90 he blesses that you know what that's called that's called first fruit faith first fruit faith says i'm going to give god the first and i have faith to believe that he's going to bless the 90 and he's going to bless me somebody lived this way some people live with leftover faith It's just leftover faith. I'm going to take all of it, keep all of it for me, and then I'm going to eat, and I'm going to spend, and I'm going to do this over here, and I'm going to have fun with all this, and we're going to, and then I'll give God what's left over. But that's not truly faith, is it? Because you're just giving God what you can see and what you have, and, and a lot of times it's not much, if anything. But God is calling us to first fruit faith. Dave Ramsey said this. He says, It doesn't even require a miracle for most people to live on the 90% in America. It just requires overcoming materialism and covetousness and the attitude that just says, I gotta have more, I've gotta have more. 
I want to give you just a little bit of context from Malachi of what was happening in chapter 3 that prompted God's rebuke and his instruction before we close today. For years, God had blessed his people, and they would be faithful to return to him the first and the best. Now, this was a principle, what we're looking at today, this was a principle that was a first established 400 plus years before the law of Moses. Some people reject this whole idea because they say, well, that was, that was part of the law of Moses. No, it was a principle God established far earlier than the law of Moses. He started it in Genesis 14 with Abram, as Abram brought a tenth of his spoils from his victory, and he brought it to Melchizedek, the high priest. We see it again in Genesis 28 with Jacob. And Jacob prayed, and he said, God, if you will protect me, if you will care for me, I will give you a tenth. And we see it throughout the Old Testament. We also see it in the New Testament. We see it in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, where Paul writes, he says, on the first day of the week, or on the Lord's day, Bring a sum of money in keeping with your income. And then he said, goes on to say, so that collections won't have to be made. What did he mean by that? He said, well, if, if you don't bring the tithe or the percentage giving in keeping with your income, then we're going to have to come to your house and make some collections. He said, don't, no, no, that's God's, God's way to fund the storehouse and to fund the local church is simply for everyone to say, we're going to put God first, give him our first and our best, let him bless the rest, and live in a life of blessing. However, people started saying, well, hey, wait, wait, wait a second. I've been blessed, and now I can't give a tenth of all of this. It, it's too much. So they began to lower the standard. And the people of Israel were not giving God their best and their first. They, they, they'd have a little blind sheep. Malachi chapter 1 talks about this. And they'd have a little blind sheep that had a little bad leg or crippled. And they would give that one to God because we'll just give God the one that, that's not as valuable to us. In a sense, they were giving leftovers to a holy God rather than giving the first and best. And God basically said, all right, if, if you don't want to remember me, then I'll just, I'll just let you do it without me. And all of a sudden... Israel's crops were not doing as well. The economy tanked. And God said, if you want to ignore me, let's just see how this goes for you. I want you to hear this loud and clear today. If we want God's blessing, we need to live God's way. And I want to live under hashtag bless. I want to live there. And God has allowed us to live there. So finally, God says, return to me and bring the tithe and test me. Somebody say, test me. He says, test me. In the Bible, now, numbers represent different things. Seven is God's number of perfection. Six represents the number of man. Ten is often the number of testing or for testing. And when God tested us for obedience, how many commandments did he give us? Ten commandments. When God tested Pharaoh's heart in Egypt, how many plagues did he send upon Egypt? Ten plagues. In the New Testament, how many virgins were tested to see if they were prepared for the return of the bridegroom? How many lepers were healed and then tested to see who would come back and give thanks to the Lord Jesus for healing them? Ten. How many disciples did Jesus have? i just testing you to make sure. I just want to make sure you knew how many disciples there were. Just testing you on that. <laughs> Ten is the number of testing, and God wants to know, will you love and trust money, or will you love and trust God and be blessed? Let me give you three very important things before we conclude. Number one, the tithe provides for God's work through his church, and that's really important to God. God has always had a plan to fund his church because he knows how important the church is for you and your family to be spiritually blessed. And so he has a plan to fund for this to happen. And this happens because of God's plan. Everything that happens here and everything we're able to do outside these walls happens initially because of God's plan to fund his church, and that is through the tithe. Because God wants you spiritually blessed because it's in the local church where we hear and learn the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we hear it again and again, and we're provoked to love and to good works. It's where you and your kids can plug into community and be with a community of believers and, and move into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. It's in the local church where we together can go and we can go as kingdom builders and impact the, the world for Jesus uh, with go trips and with 
supporting missionaries and all the things we do through Kingdom Builders. And God has a plan to fund it. It's not through bake sales. It's not through car washes. It's not through GoFundMe pages. Aren't you glad that you can come and you can worship and you can experience the blessing of God's house and not feel any arm twisting, not feeling somebody say, hey, you got to give and you got to give a lot or we're going to close the doors and we won't have money to pay the light bill. No, we're, it's not that because God has a plan and people understand what it means to be blessed under God's plan. The second thing, if you're taking notes, is this. The tithe teaches me to put God first. It teaches me to put God first. The Living Bible translates it this way and says, Deuteronomy 14, 23, the purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your life. Every time you tithe online, every time you tithe through the app, every time you give digital. You know what? Did you know that over 60%, 60% of the tithes that come in at Chapel Hill come in digitally? That's why you're handing the... the container down the row, and sometimes it gets to the row and there's only like one envelope in it. It's not because these people aren't giving. It's because 60% of, or more of you are giving online. That, that, that's wonderful. And, I, and you know what I love about that? <laughs> giving online allows you to truly give it first. Some of you even have automated giving, so you get to do it first. I mean, first thing, you're just making sure that it's coming out first. But, but if you get paid on the 15th or the 30th, uh, then it can, you can do it right then. The first thing before you spend money on anything else, you're going to give God his part. By the way, there's no 30th this month. So you don't get paid this month. No, I'm just kidding. You're probably, probably the 28th, right? So, so but, 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 but many of you do that. But what does it teach you? When you're doing it online or you're doing it through the app or even you're, you're doing it through the envelope or wherever, it teaches you that you are putting God first in your life. And it should be a reminder every single time, God's first in my life. God's first. God has my heart. And I'm going to honor him and give him my first and my best. And I just believe, I just believe this is going to be the result. Some of you need to come up here after service and get your picture taken behind this. We haven't done this. This is a great idea. This is a great idea. Some of you just need to come and say, this is our stuff. We're believing God. Put that up on your wall. That's your 90% that you are. That would be a great idea. Just have that up on the wall of your house. <laughs> Not with me in the picture, but with you in the picture. <laughs> Tide teaches me to put God first. People asked, Cindy and I, how do you do it? How do you do it with your kids? Our kids are now in their 30s. They've got lots of kids. I mean, lots of kids. And, and they all love Jesus. And they, they tithe. How do I know? Because I check. And <laughs> no, because I've trained them. We've taught them. We've talked about it. We know, they, we know they talk to their kids about it. You know, if the kids get birthday money or something, you know, they're saying, hey, what are you going to do with the first 10%? Oh, we're going to tithe, Daddy. We're going to tithe. And so we, we talk about that, and we see that. And, 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 and I can tell you, if, if you ask me about our kids, when you ask us about our family and how, how God has allowed us to be blessed in, 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 in so many spiritual ways, the first, one, of the, one of the first things, probably within the first 30 to 60 seconds, you're going to hear me talk about the tithe. It's just going to come up because that's just the way, the way we've lived for 40-plus years. And we've seen God's hand of blessing, blessing on us in so many ways. The third test of blessings, the third thing is the tithe increases my faith in God. When I see God work, it increases my faith. When I see God work, when I tithe, it releases God to open the windows and to work. It releases him. He said, bring the tithe. So when I do, God's bound to his word. So when I do, he releases and opens. I've had people tell me, I've had people tell me like the very week that they make a commitment to tithe and they tithe the first time. It's like God shows up and just surprises them with something just so they can see that he is working in their life. He does it very soon. I'm not promising you that, guaranteeing you that, but I'm just saying over the years, I've had so many people on the very day or the very week that they gave their tithe the first time, it's like God surprises them with something so, so they can have their faith increased in a God who is faithful to his word. So it releases God to open up, and it also releases God to hold off, to open up and to hold off. To hold off what? To hold off the devourer, to hold off the enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and to take your stuff and to cause that new thing to break. 
And those things that you're saying, wow, how come all this is going on? I don't know why. Sometimes we just need to stop and think, maybe we haven't allowed God to hold things off for us, to open up and to hold off. Here's what it does. It helps me to have greater faith. It it, it helps me to see that the 90% that I have will go further than the 100% if I keep it all. It, It increases my faith in God. Some of you are saying, well, it doesn't make sense, but I know it works. And some of you, a lot of you are nodding your head at me. I want you to look in the seat pocket in front of you. For those of you who have never taken this step of faith, or maybe you have and you've been inconsistent, there's a card in your seat pocket today, and we call it the three-month tithe challenge. And I want to encourage you to take a look at that because that card right there just invites you to say, I'm going to, I'm going to take a step And I'm going to test God and trust God. In fact, we believe God is so faithful, so good, we even guarantee Him. Now, we don't need to guarantee Him because He's faithful. But but we even guarantee that. So you don't have to read through it right now, but I would encourage you to consider it, take it home. If you've already read through it, maybe you've seen it in the seat pockets for, for several months, and you've read through it, but you've never taken that step, maybe today is the day for you to go ahead and fill this out and say, okay, I'm going to take the step. I'm going to take the three-month tithe challenge. I've never done this before. And fill this out and just leave it on your seat. You don't have to drop it in a container or anything. If you just want to leave it on your seat, turn over, leave it on your seat, and we'll pick it up a little bit later. But, but I want to encourage you to take a step of faith because here's what I know. I know God's stirring your heart. I know he's true to his word. I know he's faithful. But some of us just need to take that step and test him. Test him with this so that you can experience this, this with the blessing of God on it. That's what he promises us. Now, everybody else, I want you to take out your, your phone. Yeah, go ahead. It's, it, it's, it's permission. Permission's granted. Take your phone out. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to open up your text app. And, and I want you to consider this. Only do this if you say, you know, I feel, I feel that I want to be living in this blessed life that you're talking about. And I want, to, I want to take this step of faith with tithing. So maybe you're just beginning to do it today or this week. Maybe, maybe you have been inconsistent, but you want to be consistent. Or maybe you're just saying, hey, I'm in. I'm acing this. <laughs> I am, I'm just being consistent, and I just want to continue to praise God because I am blessed. I want you to open up and just text to 484848. Send a text to that number and just text this one word, blessed. Text it to the number 484848. And this text is one word blessed if you're saying, you know what, I'm going to tithe. I'm going to begin or I'm going to begin to be consistent or I'm just going to continue to do what I've watched God bless me with and I'm going to live under the blessing of the tithe. And when you, you text that, you're going to get a response. You're going to get a little message there come up on your phone. But I just want people, this is just our response. Lord, by faith, I'm just going to say I want to, be, I want to live in blessing and I want to trust God and I want to test you with the tithe. Listen, I believe when you do that, Consistently over time, you're going to be able to get up and teach this lesson, teach this message, just as just like I have today. And you'll be able to celebrate and and tell the goodness of the Lord. Listen, God asks us for our first and our best, but it's not like He's not also participating. In fact, He gave us His first and His best when He gave us His Son Jesus. Listen, we are here today because Jesus Christ was given to us as our Lord and our Savior by His Heavenly Father. And I want to invite you today to take another step of faith and just say, I'm going to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus. Maybe you're here and you've never done that. Listen, before, before you give God a tithe, before you give God a tip, before you give God anything, He just wants your life. He just wants you to give God, give Him your heart. If you will give him your heart today, you will see your life turn around 180 degrees as the Holy Spirit begins to change you and work from the inside out and lead you into a life of bless. But more than that, a life where you can be fully devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him and be used by him and to have a hope and to have a future. That is the message of the gospel that Jesus Christ came and died and rose again for you and for me that we could live spiritually and eternally blessed. Bow your heads with me right now. Maybe you're here today and you're ready to take that step of faith and say, I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of my life. If you've never done that, I'm going to pray in just a moment. I'm going to invite you to pray with me. But I'd like to know who, who's, who's in, who's saying I'm there. I just feel stirred in my heart today to say yes 
to follow Jesus. I want to live a spiritually blessed life. I want to live in blessed. And you've never maybe prayed this prayer before. You've not been following Jesus. You've been living life for yourself. But today, right now, you're ready to make a faith decision and surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So on the count of three, would you just slip up your hand? And I want I think that's just a good step of faith on your part. And I think it's just good for us to see together who's saying yes to Jesus. On the count of three, one, two, three. All over this room, slip up your hand and say, I'm ready to say yes. Hands are going up. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, I see your hand, young man. Yes, yes, sir, God bless you. Yes, yes, just up and down real quick is fine. Yes, 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 God bless you. Yes, hands are going up all over this room. Wow, today we're talking about how to live blessed. There's no greater way to live blessed than live saved, to live safe under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So if you lifted your hand or even if you didn't, I'm going to invite you to pray, and I'm going to encourage you, just pray after me. I'm going to lead you. I can't pray for you, but I can lead you, and I'm going to just invite you to pray after me. In fact, why don't everybody just, why doesn't everyone just pray after me? And let's say this together. Dear Lord Jesus, we come together in Jesus' name, knowing that you are Lord and you are God. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I believe you paid for my sin on Calvary's cross. Now I ask you to wash me. I ask you to cleanse me. And I ask you to make me brand new on the inside. Thank you for lifting the load of guilt. Thank you for giving me new hope and a future. Thank you for guiding and guarding my steps. And I thank you for being my Lord and my Savior. I believe your word that says you died and you rose again and you did it for me. Now I accept you and I surrender my life to you and I believe right now I am saved. I am saved now and I am saved eternally and I will follow you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Come on, let's praise him and thank him for that salvation, for that work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Lindsay's coming, and I want you to take the next step. Yes, amen. Well, let's rejoice again for those people that made that faith decision today. And if you did, we want to know about it. We are here to help you continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus. And you can indicate that on the back of this Connect card. You can put it if it was your first time or you're rededicating your life. Um, and you can leave that Connect card on your seat. Make sure you put some of your information on there so that our team can follow up with you this week. But we rejoice and we are so happy with you today. And if you'll stand with me right now, we have our prayer partners coming up to the front. If you did pray that prayer or you just need a miracle in your life these are people of faith to stand and believe with you to God for God to move on your behalf and if it's your first time with us again we would love to see you in the hospitality room there in the back before we leave I'd like to bless you may the Lord bless you and keep you may he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you may he turn towards you and give you peace we love you church have a wonderful week